Okay, we're back, and now we're going to talk about the muscles of the shoulder girdle. So we have five muscles that primar are primarily involved in shoulder girdle movements, and they all originate on the axial skeleton, but insert on the scapula or the clavicle. They don't attach to the, to the humerus, and remember that's because we're not talking about the shoulder joint, although it's easy to confuse uh, shoulder joint movement with shoulder girdle movement, but we need to differentiate here. And recall that these are essential in providing both dynamic stability of the scapula, um, as well as serving for the base of support for shoulder joint movements. Now the scapular muscles, before we get to them and name them, they're important for spinal posture. Forward shoulder posture or movement or this um, flexion of the scapular region of the spine, this leads to a lot of problems down the road. And it tends to be that, that in our Western culture especially, everything's out in front of us, right? Our, our iPads or our computers or our phones or our driving or our food, it's all here. And when we sit, like I probably am right now, uh, and I'm becoming aware of it, we sit with somewhat poor posture and can be slouched. So that leads to uh, scapular protractors and depressors becoming stronger and tighter, while the retractors become weaker. And so if you're strong and tight anteriorly, and you're weak in the back, and it just furthers that uh, poor maladaptive movement pattern. It contributes to kyphosis, which we talked about when we were talking about the trunk and the spine. And it's a less functional position, it's less functional for the glenohumeral joint. So it's important to maintain lumbar lordosis and keep your head over your trunk in a balanced position instead of this forward head posture. Now it's hard to do when you're working on stuff, but it's important to every once in a while get up and stretch and open up the anterior part, you know, uh, activate your upper back musculature, and it's all the more reason to incorporate something like resistance training uh, where you can focus on and target that musculature of the upper back and the shoulder girdle. Scapular winging is another common problem. So we see right here, um, you could even, you know, get your fingers under there and grab that scapula. You know, the slide says it's relatively rare. I don't know if it's actually that rare. I see quite a few individuals with scapular winging and it commonly affects serratus anterior. So maybe serratus anterior is weak. Maybe you're not doing those push-ups correctly and getting that good protraction and then retraction on the way down. Um, so serratus anterior weakness could be due to injury or paralysis. Often it could also just be due to weakness because of lifestyle factors. Now the five muscles of the shoulder girdle um, would be trapezius, the rhomboid, levator scapula, serratus anterior, and pectoralis minor. And we can see in this image the direction that the, that the line of pull of each of these muscles takes. So rhomboids and trapezius, at least the upper and middle, as well as levator scapula, they're going to be pulling your scapula up into elevation. Lower trapezius and pec minor pulls it down. Serratus anterior and pec minor can abduct the scapula. Rhomboids and middle and lower trapezius can adduct the scapula. And then the trapezius and serratus anterior can upwardly rotate it while the rhomboids and pec minor downwardly rotate it. Okay, so between those five muscles, they have all of the actions of the scapula covered. And there's at least two muscles causing each of those movements. Now, as far as the location, uh, we're going to show that as well right here. So posterior and laterally on the shoulder girdle, we have the serratus anterior. And you see each of these sort of serrated looking extensions of it as it um, originates on the rib cage. They insert on the, on the anterior aspect or the underside of the scapula, which helps to hold it down. And so if you have a weak serratus anterior, that's why you can get that scapular winging. Anteriorly, we have pec minor, and it's it's underneath, it's deep to pec major, it's really hard to palpate. If you've ever had a pec minor release, it, it's pretty painful, it's pretty uncomfortable. And so here it is on the picture, and you can see it here coming down to those ribs. And remember that pec minor aids in protraction, downward rotation, and depression. So it's all of those sort of downwardly moving uh, movements of the scapula. Then we have the little itty bitty subclavius. Oh, that's subscapula, sorry. Where is sub subclavius? There it is, subclavius, right underneath the clavicle. You can palpate that on yourself. It's oftentimes, it feels good to, to press on that, give yourself a little subclavius massage. 
and that helps with depression as well. It's not one of the major muscles. Posteriorly, we have the trapezius, so we have the upper fibers and the middle fibers and the lower fibers. Trapezius is so interesting because you have this fanning sort of shape of the um, of its lines of pull, and because of those the angles, the multiple angles of pination there, um, it can do so many actions or, and and create so many movements on the scapula. Deep to the trapezius, we have the rhomboids, the major and minor. So minor is on top um, or superior. It's just smaller, and it's angled. They're angled angled upward toward the spine. And then we also have levator scapula right here. And you can tell, you know, in the name, levate or like elevator, elevate, elevation. It pulls the scapula up. Rhomboids are going to do retraction, you know, so pull it this way. Upward rotation. So if they're pulling, if the upper fibers, so rhomboid, um, uh, rhomboids minor is pulling kind of along here, it's going to swing that uh, inferior angle upwards and elevation, so it can do elevation as well just because of those uh, upward toward the spine facing fibers. And then trapezius, I'm not gonna list, list out everything because it does just about everything, but just know that the, the action that is being performed on the scapula depends on whether it's upper, middle, or lower fibers that are contracting and what other muscles are also synergistically firing. Okay, so now we're gonna go through each of these muscles individually. So trapezius muscle, we've got the upper fibers, and remember, that's gonna be up here, upper fibers of the trapezius. Um, elevation, so pulling up into elevation, extension uh, and rotation of the head, like we talked about in the, last, in the last section. Middle fibers are going to also elevate the scapula and contribute to upward rotation and abduction while the lower fibers are going to cause depression and adduction. Maybe I'll draw these on the other side. Depression, adduction, and upward rotation. And they cause upward rotation even though they're the lower fibers because if you see they are pulling this way, pulling on that medial aspect, and if they're pulling down on that medial aspect, it's going to cause the inferior angle to sort of shoot out to the side, leverage it out to the side and upwardly rotate that scapula. Now the levator scapula muscle is attached to that medial border uh, of the scapula up here, at the superior angle, and it's going to pull the scapula up into elevation. Pretty simple, levator scapula elevates the scapula. Now the rhomboids, remember these are deep to the middle trapezius muscles, and they work together to, to abduction, sorry, adduction, to add it back to the midline, now, when the scapula is already upwardly rotated, let's say you've abducted your shoulder joint all the way over your head and that scapula is rotated upwards, what, that will stretch out, especially at these bottom fibers of uh, rhomboids major, that will stretch those fibers out. And when you contract them, and it, it will pull that inferior angle back down towards the midline. And they can, they can contribute slightly to elevation just because of that upwardly angle fiber orientation. Serratus anterior, remember this is that one that you can strengthen by doing your push-ups all the way into protraction. So they can do, they can cause protraction, drawing the medial border of the scapula away from the vertebrae. And they can also cause upward rotation. These, uh, these longer lower fibers can draw that inferior angle of the scapula further away from the, vertebra from the vertebrae. Okay, two left, so pectoralis minor. We mentioned that this is deep to the pec major, coming off of the coracoid process and attaching down at the anterior surfaces of the third to fifth ribs. It will do abduction, so that forward shoulder posture, downward rotation, and depression. So because the pec minor does abduction or protraction, downward rotation and depression, at the same time a really great movement to strengthen pec minor might be something like parallel bar dips. So you have parallel bars on either side, you've seen gymnastics people or calisthenics types do this, and you have your hands on the dips, on the dip bars, you're supporting your weight, and then you lower your body all the way down, and then come back up. That's allowing your um, pec minors to be stretched, 
and then also to support uh, your body by depressing that scapula. Because remember, the only linkage between your arms and your body is going to be through the shoulder girdle and then into that SC joint. And so by doing something like parallel bar dips, you will be relying heavily on the pec minor muscle. And lastly, the subclavius muscle. So we mentioned that this is a little tiny muscle underneath your clavicle. So sub meaning under, clavius meaning clavicle. And this stabilizes and protects the SC joint, although not always that well because the SC joint is often injured. It can also aid in depression. So when this shortens, it pulls the clavicle downwards as well as abduction. So moving the scapula out into protraction. So remember, this is just an intro to these muscles. Now that you know where they are and about what they do, the next step to learning these is to go ask your friend, ask your study partner, if you can palpate these on them, make sure you get the permission, um, have them contract and relax the muscle, move their joints through the full ranges of motion, and to feel what these muscles feel like as they contract, and then have that person do the same to you, so you can tell, you can make that mind-muscle connection of, of what it feels like to contract each muscle and then to move the joint. Uh, the best study guide for anatomy is your own body, at least for surface anatomy and kinesiology. Um, maybe not medical anatomy. So, you know, go through these muscle actions on yourself, on your study partner, and it's going to help you learn them a lot better. Okay, that wraps up our unit on the shoulder girdle, but don't forget the shoulder girdle acts in conjunction with the shoulder joint. So head on over to this video for some background information on the shoulder joint, as well as some bony landmarks. Don't forget, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I would love to answer them. Please like and subscribe to the videos and I'll see you over at the next video on the shoulder joint, background and bony landmarks. Yeah, yeah.